Hi, greetings. It's me, Dr. Paul Gerhardt, and I just wanted to welcome you to LDRD 609, Leading Organizational Change. And it's an exciting course that's just been revamped, so you guys are going to be the first one to be able to go through the... Uh, new content that's in here. As, as you know, uh, City University is on a quest to be seen as uh, one of the top doctoral programs for leadership. And uh, we know that uh, it's your hard work that helps make our program number one. So uh, we want to give you the skills and the insights that uh, students have in all the other really good uh, doctoral programs and so we've, we've updated the material a little bit. So let me tell you a little bit about this. So as you may know, all organizations need to go through organizational change. It's one of the constants of all types of organizations. When organizations fail, it's because they most likely didn't do the things that we're going to be talking about in this course. You know, when I was growing up, uh, Kmart was uh, the number one a uh, place to buy uh, your low-cost retail goods and services, and uh, they failed to change. The internet came out, and Walmart uh, used uh, the internet to help build its uh, sales uh, by making sure that customers had access to their cheap products online. And Kmart said, oh, we're just going to use the internet as a... Uh, as a calling card, we'll just put a go visit one of our stores so that you could buy your cheap, crappy goods from us at one of our stores. You know, they were relying on what worked for them yesterday rather than looking ahead and seeing what needed to be done in the future. Well, same thing needs to happen in all types of organizations, you know, educational institutions. Uh, many of us in this program are working in the academic world. Uh, and even academic organizations constantly need to change. You, uh, you've probably seen City University change over the, the time that you've been in it. And you probably will see it changing because every organization is striving to maintain market share. And so that could look different ways uh, to many different types of organizations. But without having the skills as a change agent, uh, organizations fail. So we need to be experts in organizational change. Uh, if you've taken other classes from me, you know that um, not only have I been a professional educator for the last 20 years, but I've also uh, been a reasonably successful uh, organizational development consultant. My uh, work with um, executives and employees at all different levels of organizations has been in leadership development, uh, diversity, and a little bit in organizational change. Just because uh, it's, it's important to help organizational cultures uh, be the best that they can, and that takes the work of smart leaders and an understanding of where they put their focus, that's where they're going to get their results. So, and you've probably heard me say that before, but it's really true. In, uh, in every organization, if employees resist change, organizations are a little bit weaker. When everybody is doing the right thing, then organizations are a little bit stronger. And that really should be the goal, is to help organizations be as strong as they possibly can be. And that's what this course really is all about. We're a 10-week course. Uh, there's some exciting assignments that are involved to help you uh, do research and to help you really synthesize the scholarly literature to help make you an expert. You become an expert by uh, digging through the literature developed by the experts. And hopefully you walk away with a toolbox of powerful skills that help make you a stronger asset to your current organization and your future organization. In week one, we introduce uh, the Cotter's Change Model, which is the backbone of this course. Uh, the, it was, this is uh, one of the the best-selling books on organizational change and it's a simple 
model, but it's one of those models that if you really understand it, it helps you understand what needs to be done at each of the different stages. And so we've used it as the backbone to build this course on organizational leadership. And so in, in week number one, we look at Cotter's model and we discuss uh, why change is necessary and why changes uh, fail. Sometimes people will have a good idea and then they fail to implement it properly or fail to make the adjustments along the way and that's what causes organizations to fail. In week number two we talk about factors that influence successful change. Uh, you're doing some some research that helps you uh, really understand uh, why organizations fail and we'll discuss those things and so as you're going through any course that you're taking I always suggest that you read everybody's posts because that helps you build your knowledge and insights based on what other people are seeing and together we become stronger and that's the same way that works in an organization too with single focus we each become stronger in week number three uh, we di dive into uh, leading change and we look at McKinsey's 7s model and we're also uh, looking at the situational leadership model and the transformational leadership model. And I'm sure you've seen these in other classes that you've taken. But as you may know, when leaders are doing the right things at the right time with the right people, that's what makes the organization stronger and failing to do so. Uh, makes the organization a little weaker. In week three, we've got our first paper that's due. It's the Successful Organizational Change Factor Analysis. And so do make sure that you're looking at the syllabus and understanding what's expected of you. You're integrating some research and some models into your uh, paper to be able to understand uh, what change needs, what, what kind of things to look for in change. In an organization. So in, in week number four, uh, again, we're diving into uh, leading change, but we're also looking at uh, one of the best books uh, in history on organizational change, William Bridges' Change Model. And you don't have to go out and buy the book, but you do have to do some research. His work is called Transitions, and it's kind of a simple concept out there, and I've embedded a video in the course to help you understand it, but I do ask that you dive into the literature and see what's out there and discuss what's out there in the literature so that you can help us see things through your eyes and help us all become a little bit stronger when we're all looking at the topics and we're dissecting it and we're comparing and contrasting ideas. And we're doing that critical thinking that helps us as future doctors be as effective as we possibly can. In week five, we're talking about developing a vision and strategy. And so this is the thing that helps gain a competitive advantage in an organization and the strategy helps us sustain that competitive advantage and it really is important that every organization whether it be a for-profit or a non-profit organization that they really have a clear vision and strategy in place and then they get stakeholders in place to buy into the strategy and vision but also contribute to that and then we're looking at appreciative inquiry which is uh, another really powerful and very popular model that many organizations use to help make sure they're doing the right thing at the right times. And we're looking at uh, situational leadership and transformational leadership too. So again, I ask you to synthesize these ideas, practice that critical thinking. You know, how can you apply these things? What does the literature say about these concepts along the way? You're, you, this is the part about being a doctoral student is you're constantly diving in to the material written by the experts because that's how we become experts, right? In week number six, uh, again, we're going into uh, the leading change book, and these are very short chapters, uh, but we're also looking at a psychological model called Jahari's Window. And essentially, Jahari's Window is uh, says that we don't know what we don't know. We we need others to help us understand uh, what we don't know, but we also need to recognize that um, together we have to explore ideas uh, to help make the organization stronger because we don't always know what we don't know, but other people might have insights. But with the right uh, focus on what we don't know, 
uh, it could help us close that gap and make the organization stronger, right? So in week six, uh, we have another paper due. It's the Literature Synthesis and Organizational Change Plan. And so uh, you do need to make sure that you look at the rubric closely for this one because it's a little bit different. And again, we're using APA 7th edition in our program. It's the same type of formatting that's going to be due in your dissertation. And it's important to practice that in all of your classes. So when, when you read my feedback to you uh, each week and I'm picking on your APA, it's not because I'm trying to pick on you. It's because I'm trying to help you uh, meet our standards because it's what's expected. Your dissertation is going to be published for the whole world to see when you become a doctor, but it will only be published if you're meeting our writing expectations and you're developing those skills in your classes. And so we want your degree to mean something and be very powerful and be well respected. And so we're only as good as our students allow us to be. And so help us as professors help you uh, gain your writing skills so that we can get you published and you can become a doctor and have all the power of having your credentials as a doctor under your belt. So uh, in week seven, we're looking at the Kubler-Ross change curve model. And so, again, that's a, another uh, very important uh, change model that you have to consider. And you'll be showing us what you're finding in the literature and talking about how it works and maybe where you've seen it happen before. In week number eight, uh, we are diving into the leading change model again. We're diving into situational leadership and transformational leadership again. And uh, we are evaluating actions that result in, a, in an organizational plan and we're really focusing on what we call in the literature short-term wins and this is really important to celebrate wins along the way be very very clear on what stakeholders see as a win but it's also important about sustaining our energy and momentum as we move forward in the change process. In week number nine, we're talking about consolidating gains and producing more change. And we look at another model, the Burke Litwin change model. And it's another important model that uh, you should be able to incorporate into your final paper, your organizational change evaluation paper, which is due uh, in week number nine. So you've got three big papers that you're doing in each of these papers you're expected to dive into the scholarly literature you're just you're talking about applying the theories that we've been talking about along the way and I highly uh, encourage you as a matter of fact I double dog dare you to uh, read everybody's posts and copy and paste uh, the references that they're using along the way and make you know notations about what those references are about because you may find those as really good resources to help incorporate into your papers along the way and in future papers also so ladies and gentlemen i'm excited to work for you uh, for you and with you along the way please read my feedback along the way read my announcements uh, I'm here to support your success, but I need your help in making this the very best class that you've ever taken uh, with your valuable insights and your engagement throughout the week. We're only as strong as the weak weakest link. I promise you that I'm not going to be the weakest link, and I hope that you can do the same with me as a, a dedication to each of us to be the very best you can be. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing well, right? Thanks so much, everyone. I, I hope that you enjoy the class as much as uh, we've got planned for you. Uh, if you have questions, make sure you reach out to me. My contact information is published each week in our announcements and, of course, in the syllabus. Your success is my success, and I'm dedicated to help making this the best class possible. Uh, make it a great day because only you get to choose how you feel about it. I'm Dr. Paul Carehart.